Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Sports Show. My host, Robert. All right, WWE Hell in the Cell review. Just getting off the old Peacock Network with Hell in the Cell. Overall, not a bad show. Um, I ended up giving it three star overall. Um, some of these matches could have delivered better. Um, in fact, we only had, we had, what, six matches on the full card, two over Hell in the Cell. We did not have a universal title because of the Hell in the Cell match that happened on Friday night. I kind of disagree with that. I wish they would have put that match on this card. Um, I think when we build these shows like a Hell in the Cell, like a TLC, even, if, I mean, what other big ones are there where we do kind of stuff like that? When we have these gimmick pay-per-views, there needs to be more than gimmicks. So Hell in the Cell, every match should be Hell in the Cell. TLC, every match should be a ladder type match. You have enough titles. You have enough number one contendership stuff. You could do stuff like that with. Um, but yeah, we're going to run down this card here real quick. First match, the pre-show match, we had Mandy Rose versus Natalia. Um, this was all based on kind of a backstage segment where Natalia and Tamina were training in the ring. Mandy and Dana Brooke were taking pictures. And Natalia and, and um, Tamina said that's why... We're champ women's champions. That's why we're better than you because we actually train in the ring, not on pictures. So it set up this match with uh, Mandy Rose and Natalia. I actually look at probably Monday Night Raw possibly doing a WWE women's tag title match between Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke and then the champions, Tamina and Natalia. But on the pre-show match, you know, Natalia got the victory. It was an okay match. I mean, Mandy Rose is getting better in the ring. But she, I mean, she's not to the level of Natalia or Charlotte, or Shayna Baszler, or any of them yet. I'm going to give the match two and a half. Um, then our first match on the show was the Hell in the Cells for the SmackDown Women's t title. We had champion Bianca Belair um, with Bayley. Um, the fact that Pat McAfee kept, during the match, um, Bianca was using the stairs and bringing the stairs into the ring. Pat McAfee kept putting over how heavy the stairs were, how heavy the stairs were. Okay, dude, we get, they're heavy. Um, but it's like, dude, just bring it down a little. Um, at one point, I texted uh, Quaddy from uh, part of the Pulse family, and uh, we, I said they should have made this match a Texas bull rope hell in the cell. And if you've seen the match, you know with everything they were doing, Bianca's hair with Bailey tied it to the ring, for the... the um, um, rope tying, tying it to the chair and the Bianca tying it to Bailey and just using the hair like a bull rope. It's like, come on, well, are we setting up for a Texas bull rope match at Money in the Bank for the SmackDown Women's title? Do it, you know, it would be intriguing. I mean, the first ever woman Texas bull rope match, why not? Um, if Manders and you know, one, the one called Manders can pull off a bull rope match and game changer, these women here can do it as well. Um, but Bianca again to get, get yeah end up getting the victory. She did a KOD on the ladder. Um, but yeah, the fact that they use the ladders, they use the tables, the chairs, and stuff. They use the kendo sticks a lot. Um, at one point, there was a spot where there was two kendo sticks laying between the ring and the uh, cage, which they were duct taped together. So when Bianca went through them, they, they broke. <laughs> it's like really yeah, come on. This match wasn't. To me, wasn't hard hitting enough to be deserve a hell in a cell. Um, the Rhea Ripley Charlotte match should have been the other hell in a cell match, if not every one of these matches hell in a cell. Um, again, Beyonce got the victory, retained her SmackDown Women's title, three and a quarter star. We go on to July's pay per view, which is Money in the Bank in front of a live crowd. It'll be interesting to see how the crowd dynamic changes from the Thunderdome. When the whole Thunderdome is done. I might do a best of Thunderdome matches. Kind of something best of for this era. I mean, this is going to be an era for wrestling. It's like the Attitude Era. This is the Thunderdome era. All right. Next up, we had Seth Rollins versus Cesaro. I actually looked up Class of the Champions, or Ring of Honor, 2009, October 9th to be exact. I saw Seth Rollins in a match in a front of 150 people along with Cesaro in a four-corner survival match. Um, these guys have came a long way at time. I mean, it was 2009. So you're looking at, what, 
was that 11, 12 years, almost 12 years. These guys have main event. These main event. These guys were on WrestleMania. Uh, I mean, this match was good. Don't get me wrong, but there could have been so much more done with it. It could. I mean, it, to me, it deserved a hell of a sell. Um, but Seth Rollins getting the victory. Uh, I ended up giving it three and a half. It was just a good match. Both these guys can put on great matches. It's like they start to push Cesaro, then they're like, eh, we're not going to do it. I think Cesaro should have got the victory here. If you want to push him to win the money in the bank or do something big with him, you've got to give him victories. Um, I'm really curious who they have win the money in the bank at this point. But, um, so yeah, Seth got the victory there, three and a half. Next up, we had Alexa Bliss and Shayna Baszler. Um,. We have Shayna Baszler, who does be a badass in the ring, former MMA fighter, former NXT Women's Champion, former WWE Women's Tag Team Champion, and she cowers to Alexa Bliss because of the damn doll. Really? Not believable. Now, my wife was watching the show with me, and she even said she didn't believe Shayna Baszler, but she actually believed that Alexa Bliss was crazy. So yeah, Alexa Bliss is coming off as the crazy fiend that she needs to be. To me, even this match wasn't completely believable because you had at one point Alexa, I mean, just eye contact with Nia Jax on the outside of the ring. And Alexa pulled her arm up, Nia's arm came up, and they sl and she slapped Reginald. It's like she had mind control over her slapping Reginald. Um, but yeah, we had Twisted Bliss. Alexa got the victory. I wasn't in this match really at all. I give it one and three quarters. I mean, there might be people out there, oh, this is the best match of the court. No, it's trash to me. I mean, this whole Alexa Bliss thing, I don't think with live crap comes off the way it should. I think with the Thunderdome, you can pre-tape segments and do all that. I just think, I mean, if the Fiend's done, this needs to be done. I don't know what's going on there. Next match we had was Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. Um, this, this feud is always special because I watched most of the two-year feud they had in Ring of Honor. Um, hate chapter two, was it November, September, October, November, something like that, late 2010. I seen this match in person, again, in front of 150 people in a Ring of Honor show. Um, but yeah, I mean, Kevin Owens playing up with the fact that on Friday Night Smackdown, Commander of Zeeb, whatever his name is, throat punched him and he couldn't, he was coughing during the match and almost was counted out because of it. He couldn't, you know, it's like, okay, I mean, I, I love the fact that they're carrying that story on in Sammy's whole, you know, con conspiracy theory type deal they're carrying that on to. These guys can tell a story. They can go out there and just do unbelievable ring work. Um, I give this match, which, I mean, I give it three and a half, but I mean, three and three quarters would have been awesome too. I actually initially wrote down three and three and I kept kind of like, eh, three and a half. So it was right there. It was one of the one of the best matches of the night. But these two guys are so talented. They tell so great stories that you can go out there and just have a match. And I mean, it would have been cool if it had been Hell in a Cell. I'd love to see these guys in Hell in a Cell because they would have killed each other. Um, but then, uh, so Sami Zayn with a hula of a kick getting the victory there. Uh, next up, we had the Raw Women's side of the line. We had champion Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair. Rhea Ripley came into WWE in 2017, May Young Classic. Um, it's funny to look at the roster for the Million Classic, how many Dakota Kai, Rhea Ripley, Shayna Baszler, just, oh my hell, you know, Tessa Blanchard was on that, I'm like, really? I didn't realize she was even in that. But it's like, you see such talent, it's like, okay, cool. Charlotte and Rhea should have been, I mean, it came off good, I ended up giving it three and a quarter, which may be a little high for it, but that's how I felt. Um, but the fact that Rhea got herself purposely disqualified, Again, this should have been in Hell in a Cell. This would have made more sense and been more hard hitting in Hell in a Cell than Bianca and Bailey. Um, but the fact that Rhea took the announce table, the little cover thing, and hits Charlotte with it, DQ. I've seen a lot worse happen on normal matches, and they don't DQ them. But whatever. Um, but, excuse me. So, yeah, it was a DQ finish. Charlotte won the match via disqualification. Why Rhea Ripley is still Raw Women's Champion. Again, what is money? What is money in the bank going to do for the women's division? 
Do we have somebody call from NXT to win the, the Money in the Bank? Do we have a Shayna Baszler win it? Shayna and Romero might be pretty good. We've seen it. Maybe we're bringing in Kaylee Ray from NXT UK and feud her with Rhea. We've seen it. It was good. Um, but yeah, so Rhea Ripley retains the title while Charlotte gets the win by disqualification in three and a quarter match. Star match. Then our main event, there would be the World Heavyweight Title Line, Hell in a Cell, Drew McIntyre, Last Chance. Um, Bobby Lashley, the WWE Champion. If Drew McIntyre cannot beat Bobby Lashley, he will not wrestle for the WWE title as long as Bobby Lashley is champion. This match, it was hard hitting. It was everything a Hell in a Cell should be. Um, they used the cell. They used the tables, chairs, kendo sticks, the stairs. Um, they used everything they should have used. I mean, just, it was so hard hitting and so you know, so many little Drew going after Bobby, making Bobby look less of a monster. Um, at one point, Bobby took a kendo stick and put it across um, in the corner across um, Drew and tied it into the cell. He's just beating on him, and then. Drew breaks the kendo stick to get free. You know, MVP slid his cane into the cell, and MVP, uh, Lashley uses that cane to attack him with it. And it's like everything that you should happen in the Hell in the Cell happened. I mean, it was a really, really good match. And the fact that the referee gets knocked out. Okay. Well, when the referee got knocked out, Drew called for the referee that was on the outside to come in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shenanigans time. The cage got opened. MVP came in. Referee counts one, two with Drew Cutter and Lashley. MVP pulls the ref out. Uh, Drew McIntyre goes after MVP, but at least he annihilates MVP. He thought he went for his Claymore before he went for Bobby to get up. MVP grabs his leg, holds on to him. Bobby runs in. Clothesline, roll up. Grab his tights. One, two, three. Bobby Lashley, still your WWE World Champion. And Drew McIntyre, not able to wrestle for the world title as long as Drew, as long as Bobby, Bobby Lashley holds it. There we go. That's how we went off the air. I thought it was a good match. I always hate wonky finishes like that, which I mean, technically it's not wonky, but it is kind of. Um, but yeah, they had to do a weird finish like that. I ended up giving it three and three quarters. Uh, I've been at four if it wasn't for that kind of MVP getting involved. Um, the fact that they used the big cell, um, I like the old cell, the one that Mick Foley came off the top of. But one thing I noticed, I noticed right away, I was telling my wife and she was watching with me. And if you looked over the, by the announce table, there was the spots where you would climb. I'm like, okay, something wonky. They either that's because they reuse the cell or they're actually going to climb. Um, they didn't climb, which is kind of shocking. I expect when the door opened, then you go out and go up or something, do something with it. But they didn't. Um, but Bobby Lashley still your WWE champion. Rhea Ripley still your Raw Women's champion. Bianca Belair still your SmackDown Women's champion. Uh, we've seen on SmackDown on Fox, we had Roman Reigns retain the title versus one Rey Mysterio Jr. Um. I gave that match. Let me find SmackDown. Smack the wacky here. I gave that match three star from SmackDown. It was okay. It wasn't anything special. Wish they would have put that match on this card, but hey, whatever. Let's not have our Universal Champion Roman Reigns on this card. Uh, we'll see what happens in the main bank. See what happens going forward tomorrow night on Raw. I actually do suspect we'll have a rematch between Charlotte and Rhea. Uh, maybe we should have done that in Hell in a Cell, and we wouldn't have to have a rematch on Raw. We could have done a finish like this on Raw. I mean, this match could have been on Raw last week and then made it Hell in a Cell for this match, but whatever. Um, so that's going to wrap up the WWE Hell in a Cell review. Overall, I give it three star the whole card. Not bad. Not a bad card at all. Stay tuned for the sports show for the NASCAR previews this week, along with I should be able to get the Game Changer Wrestling. Uh, what's the name of that show? It's from Wyoming. Fun, fun. It is the Outlaw Mud Show for Grand Changer Wrestling. Ricky Morton, part of the Rock and Roll Express. He wrestled for the first time ever in Wyoming. He has now wrestled in all 50 states. His Hall of Fame career. He had a great match against um, Addis Kogar. So definitely stay tuned to Robert Sports Show this week for the review of that. As always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. And don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your... YouTube leader in Sports Town content.